Those of you who've been here at church for a while, you know about this, and if you're new, uh, this is new information for you, but we have cats. Most churches have cats, and some of them know it and some of them don't. Uh, a few years back, some kittens showed up on our back porch of our, uh, behind the kitchen, and uh, it took me a few months, but I finally earned the trust of two of them. Uh, one is left, and I call him the white kitty. Now, some of you think he's tan or pink or orange, but he's white, and that's what I call him. He's, his name is White Kitty. Now, another cat has joined the, uh, the team, if you will, and he is now the gray kitty because he's gray. <laughs> I keep it simple. Now, the White Kitty, I have earned his trust so much that now he will follow me into the parish hall and as I'm sitting at my desk working, he'll walk into my office, jump on my desk and walk around my desk. And the other day, he stepped down into my lap and laid down and proceeded to shred my pants with his claws. <laughs> so I had to remove him from my lap. How did that happen? His mother was feral. She never came near me. The, the kittens, maybe six weeks old by the time I saw them, how did a feral cat get to this point? Well, I just loved him and never did anything to scare him or hurt him. Well, let's look at what happened in today's gospel. The man was deaf and mute, and the people brought him to Jesus and begged him to heal him. Now, the word in most translations is begged. Some say beseech or besought, as we heard in today's gospel from the prayer book. And Jesus did a great miracle of healing. But today, instead of focusing on the healing, I want to look at the people's motivation for bringing that man to Jesus. Now, if you look earlier in Mark's gospel at chapter 5, Jesus had already been to that region called the Decapolis. And when he was there, um, they went to this re area where a man was possessed by demons and no one could do anything with him. And Jesus delivered him from a, what's called a legion of demons. And they ran to town and people came back to see that the man was in his right mind and they marveled about it. And when Jesus left, they spread the word throughout the Decapolis. It's called the Decapolis because it was 10 small cities right in a, a region there. So when Jesus came back to the Decapolis here in chapter 7, they had already had this experience with him. Some had seen him, but others had heard about him. And they believed and they trusted and they had hope and faith in Jesus. They believed that Jesus could heal because he had delivered that man previously. And they trusted that Jesus would respond to their request. And they had hope that this man who had been mute and deaf for so long would be healed. And they put their faith in Jesus alone. The doctors had not been able to do anything with him. Now, back to the white kitty. How does that figure into this message today? He now believes that I will feed him. And I do. And he trusts me that I will not harm him except for the three or four times I stepped on his paws. <laughs> you know how cats will dart in between your feet? I b truly believe they're trying to trip you. <laughs> and he does that every day. So I've stepped on his paws a few times, but he still loves me. And he hopes that I will show up. He's waiting for me. When I open the chapel, he's often right there meowing because I'm there. And he has faith in me that I will love him and take care of him. Now, 
an interesting point about those people from the Decapolis. Many of them went to see Jesus after he delivered the man from demons, as I said. But a, a number of them did not go to see Jesus. They only heard about him. And yet, when he came back, they all came because they believed. So what about us? I would hazard a guess that most of us here, many of you listening online, you've heard about Jesus. It's kind of hard to grow up in America and not hear about Jesus. It happens, but it's rare. So I want to end today's message with a scripture and then some questions. So in Romans chapter 10, starting at verse 8, it says this. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now some of us perhaps were reluctant to truly embrace Jesus in our life. Maybe like that white kitty when I first met him, they're scared and hesitant and what not? Maybe we're a little afraid of truly embracing Christ. But let me ask you this. Do you believe that Jesus can deliver you from sin and death? Do you trust that Jesus loves you and is always with you? Do you hope in him and nothing else? And do you have faith in him that he will be with you always? Let us pray. Almighty God, Even as many put their faith and trust and hope and belief in Christ during those days of his three years of ministry when they encountered him or heard about him. Lord, today I pray that all who hear this word would be moved by your Holy Spirit to believe, to trust, to hope, and have faith in your Son. In his name we pray, amen.